you know those nasty bright lines that hug certain edges in your landscape images and stand out like a sore thumb? Yeah, they're halos and they suck. In this video, I'm showing you the easiest and most effective way to get rid of them. But first, why do halos actually happen? Well, they're most commonly caused by one of three things. One, certain sharpening techniques. Two, masking based on inaccurate selections. And three, some difficult exposure blending. You know, really it's best to avoid halos in the first place, but sometimes they are unavoidable, either that or sometimes it is just easier to fix them after they happen. So with that said, here's how to do it. Here we have a finished image of mine, which is all good and well, except for this one nasty halo that when I zoom in, uh, you'll see that I've introduced a very horrible halo just for the purpose of this demonstration. So we're talking about this white line that hugs the edge of this headland and goes out into the sky. Hopefully your halos won't be as extreme as this, but it will be a good demo so you can see how effective this technique is. Step one of the process, add a new layer to your document. Let that be on the top of any layers that you have. And then change the blend mode of the layer to darken. Now I'll tell you the reason why we're using the darken blend mode in a minute, just after I show you the actual technique. But you know, there's something that you really do need to get right. Um, depending on your image, you'll want to select either darken or lighten. So I'll tell you about that in just a sec. But first, let's actually go ahead and fix this halo. Next, we're going to select the clone stamp and we're going to use a hardness of zero and quite a small uh, pixel size of, on the brush, but we're going to judge it by eye. And basically what we're looking for is, is a brush size that is just going to allow us to cover the halo, the full width of the halo in one brush stroke. You know, that can be like, say, twice the width of the halo is a good size for the brush. And then we need to just check the uh, this sample drop down is set to either current and below or all layers. So the process is really as simple as just sampling from the sky as close to the halo as you can get without clicking into the halo and then just brushing and cloning the sky into the halo. Now you might need to just go around and kind of resample if uh, like in this case, there's a few little bits that, you know, it's a very detailed edge and you need to uh, just readjust to make sure you're getting in there as accurately as possible. But as we can see, this is a very quick way and just about as effective as I think you can really get. So like I said a minute ago, the reason we're using Darken and the reason this works is because the headland, the object that has the halo around it, is darker than the sky behind it. The reason that we're not seeing it actually clone over the edge of the headland is because the headland is darker than the sky and it's only going to clone where the cloned pixels are darker than what we're brushing onto. Now, sometimes you're going to want to use this in a lighten blend mode. It's not going to look any good here. It's not going to work here. But the time when you're going to want to do that is when there's a dark halo around the subject, which can happen when the foreground subject is lighter than the background and you've added a strong sharpening effect. So for a bright halo, you want to set your layer to the darken blend mode and vice versa for a dark halo, set it to the lighten blend mode. Now, with all this said, halos most commonly appear when blending exposures, but that isn't the only thing that can go wrong when blending exposures. So to find out if you're making any of the other exposure blending mistakes that can send your images south, then just check out this next video.